Hi everyone, this is AJ, welcome back to the channel, welcome to a new episode of my subscriber recommendation review. Yeah, where one of my subscribers in a chat would ask me if I've seen a certain film and recommends it to me. And thusly that brings me to the movie Crimson Peak. So let's take a look and I'll share my thoughts on this movie. Yeah, so it was asked of me by Pure Hangout. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description below um, as to whether I've seen this film. Now, Pure, Pure Hangout, he's got an own, his, his own channel, um, which I highly recommend. Go and see. Um, he does this wonderful random ranking, these wonderful random ranking videos. Um, such a simple idea, yet so effective um superb you know what i mean it's just yeah wonderful anyway yeah go and check out his channel um give him a bit of love um uh, maybe subscribe to him that sort of thing so anyway so he'd asked me whether i'd seen crimson peak i don't believe he's the only person to have asked me that though um he recommended it um someone else may have it, it may have been Stephen. I, I don't know was it you Stephen? let me know um but anyway so i'm gonna give you my thoughts on the film now this film came out in 2015 and was um, rated 15 and has a runtime of 1 hour and 59 minutes. The film was directed by Guillermo del Toro, um, who also wrote the film along with Matthew Robbins. Now, the music in the film was done by Fernando Valesquez, um, and the film stars Mia Wasikowska as Edith Cushing. Now, Edith Wasikowska, you'd recognise from the Alice in Wonderland movies. She played Alice. Jessica Chastain stars as Lucille Sharp. Tom Hiddleston as Thomas Sharp. Charlie Hunnam as Dr. Alan McMichael. And Jim Beaver from stuff like Deadwood and The Supernatural as Carter Cushing, the father to Edith Cushing. Mia, her character. Yeah, so... This is a sort of horror fantasy kind of genre film. Um, the film follows Mia as, as a young child. She lost her mother, um, but she would see her as a ghost appearing. Uh, and she fancies herself growing up as a bit of an author. Um, and she gets to meet in Thomas Sharp and ends up in a relationship with him. Um, and she moves to his house over in England, in, in Cumberland, in England. Um, and the house itself um, bleeds, remembers, all this sort of stuff. Uh, and, and, yeah, and, and she goes on this journey of, 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 of discovery of, of what's happened in the house prior, the history of um, Lucille and Thomas Sharp and, and what's going on and how they're... Um, essentially conning people and murdering people and this sort of a thing and but actually falls in love with Thomas who falls in love with her and did you know I mean all this sort of stuff um, yeah so anyway this film is it's obviously it's directed by Guillermo del Toro who is a visionary filmmaker I mean you know he has a distinct style a distinct eye a distinct um, you know it, his films look like no one else's, basically. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's, it's very much like a sort of Tim Burton-esque, but with stronger storytelling. Now, um, the film itself, I, I, it, 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 story-wise, it was interesting enough. Um, you know, it, it captured me from the very first moment. Um, and But I found myself looking at... The costume design, the hair, the makeup, all this sort of stuff. That was all, all wonderful, wonderful. For the time period that the film is set in, it, it just looks fabulous. Um, obviously, the house itself, when they get to England, this was a, a house that was built for the film, completely constructed for the movie, and, and it's just wonderful in its architecture and design and the interior of the house the house itself is a character of its own and it just looks beautiful in its run down state with this hole in the ceiling even with the snow coming through and this sort of stuff it, it, it just pops off of the screen a really interesting 
visually interesting, aesthetically pleasing movie in every scene. Um, the effects used on, on the ghosts within the film look fantastic um, because they're, they're CGI, but the majority of the film is done, feels like it's done in camera. Do you know what I mean? It is, with the exception of the ghosts and that. And it, it just. Uh, so what you're looking at is tangible and real for the most part in this movie and, and everything, every minute detail in this in this film is up on screen. Now, Mia Wasikowska, her, her acting in the film was, was really good. Um, she's a really good young actress. Jessica Chastain is, is always tends to deliver in most performances that she does. Um, Tom Hiddleston, you know, we all know Tom Hiddleston as Loki from Marvel. That's his, probably his most famous role. But he's a wonderful actor in his own right himself. Charlie Hunnam, I can sort of take him or leave him, to be honest. Um, and Jim Beaver's there propping up. And Jim Beaver's always good in anything he does. So the film's got a wonderful, diverse cast of of, of actors that, that, that bring different things and different nuances to the performances. And, um, you know... The characters bounce off of each other really well. The interactions between them, um, it don't feel forced. It feels like there is connections between the characters and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, the, the musical score for the film is very good. Um, I found myself listening to the music at certain points and, and intrigued by the music. And, and you know, some of the scores within the film I'd, I'd probably listen to outside of the film itself. And, and, you know, just put on, it, it, it was that good. It was a very, very interesting um, dynamic within the film. So, stepping back to the plot of the film, I did find the story to be somewhat predictable. I, I did predict certain goings on within the film. Um, it was obvious that the character of um, Thomas Sharp was... Um, well, I predicted him to have been married to... Lucille Sharp, although they turned out to be a brother and sister who were having this sort of a, a relationship, so to speak. So in that sense, the predictability was there, but not entirely. But I was on the right track for stuff um, going throughout the film. Um, you know, when Jim Beaver was killed, my, my missus straight away said, that's, that's Jessica Chastain who's done that. Um, you know what I mean? So from a, from that story aspect, it, it it was good, but not fantastic. Um, I think any longer than the one hour and 59 minute running time, um, the film would start dragging for me, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, it, it was nice. You know, technically speaking, this is a fantastic film. It's fantastic in all aspects. Um, you know, a lot of love from... Del Toro goes into every aspect of, of, of his films. Um, you know, but the, the whole film itself is a technical achievement um, with this story through it that, that is very good, but like I said, somewhat predictable. Um, but yeah, no, no, otherwise very enjoyable film. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Now, a little bit of um, trivia about this film. Like I said, the house was built in its entirety, but after the shoot, it had to be pulled down to make space for for other works, um, which is a real shame because it was a real beautiful design and gothic kind of architecture. Um, like I said, a character within its own right within the film. Now, originally, Jessica Chastain and Tom Hiddleston um, were not the primary cast of this film it was actually benedict cumberbatch um and emma stone but benedict cumberbatch dropped out of the role um it was a mutual agreement between him and del toro there was no hard feelings um and within 72 hours um tom hiddleston has signed on but tom hiddleston did ask permission of cumberbatch whether he would mind him doing it because they are good friends in real life um, and Emma Stone was obviously replaced by Mia um, for reasons I don't know. Um, now Jessica Chastain she actually learned to play the piano for this film. Um, this isn't the first time she's learned to play a piano, um, sorry, a musical instrument for a movie so every time you see her on screen playing the piano that is actually her playing 
the piano. So anyway, so that was my review and quick thoughts on this film. Um, tell me down below what, what your thoughts on this movie are. Um, I mean, it, I was asked to watch it. It was on the back of me switching off Del Toro's latest film, um, Nightmare Alley, that I couldn't stand and just couldn't get into and switched off about half hour into the movie and I couldn't be bothered to watch another two hours of it. So I said I'd, I'd visit this one and I'd do a review of this one. So thank you for that. So like I said, it was pure hangout. Um, go and check out his his channel and why not. And if any reviewer, if any um, viewers out there have any recommendations for me of stuff to watch, then um, I'll, I'll accept that challenge, so to speak, as long as it's a film that, um, within a, a sort of the realm of something that I'm overly interested in, shall we say. Um, yeah, um, obviously it might be a film I've already seen, but yeah, just drop me a message down below, um, and there we go. See you, AJ. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care all. Goodbye.